All right, and welcome back, everyone. Money Show would like to welcome Harry Boxer, founder of thetechtrader.com. He has more than 50 years of Wall Street investment experience and technical analysis experience, including eight years as a chief technical analyst with three brokerage firms. Harry's a renowned author and is widely syndicated on sites, including Market Watch, The Street, Forbes, and more. Harry, thanks so much for being here. Always great to speak with you. It's all yours. Okay, my pleasure. Thanks everybody for being here. Um, what I do is uh, day trading and swing trading. And um, we have a room with several hundred people in it, uh, actually um, upwards of a thousand at some point, depending on the day. We have uh, um, what I consider one of the nicest sites in the area. Um, I specialize, as I said, in, in technical day trading and swing trading. Uh, it's based on uh, my 60 years of experience. I've been doing this a long time. Um, and uh, I would like to show you some of my techniques today. I wrote a book called Profitable Day in Swing Trading, using price volume surges and pattern recognition to catch big moves in the market. I'm a big believer that patterns form the same kind of patterns form in all time frames, whether they be intraday one minute charts, 515, an hourly chart, or even daily weekly charts. You're all the same. You form your triangles, your pennants, um, your coils, and all kinds of consolidation patterns and trend lines and moving averages at all different time frames. Uh, what I like to use is 10, 21, and 50-day moving averages on my charts. I find that for short-term trading, whether it be daily or swing trading. And what I consider swing trading is anywhere from 5 to 15 days, as much as 3 to 5 weeks. Uh, but a day trade is a day trade, and if it, I give you a day trade, it's meant to be a day trade only. Um, we certainly trade a lot of momentum stocks intraday, good or bad markets. We've had market, when the day the market was down 1,800 points a couple weeks ago, uh, whenever that was, actually a few days ago, uh, we had a spectacular day on the long side where many of our stocks were running. So uh, just to give you an introduction, um, I'm a big believer that the way to properly prepare for the day is by looking and analyzing patterns from the previous trading day. There may be some stocks that close extremely strong and maybe even are, are set up for swing trades, but from a, uh, from a follow through standpoint, there may be several stocks that I find that I put on my list for the following day because they may be follow through type day trades. Now, my morning routine basically is set up to look for stocks that are trending, surging, gapping, and I'd like to see at least five to 10% um, and I'd, on at least five to 10 times normal volume. And you look at pre-market trades, you can see a lot of stocks that are running, gapping and surging pre-market. Uh, one of the things I always do is I come into the, the morning and I look at one minute charts and I give various opinions of what I'm looking at. Um, here's an example of a stock that we uh, looked at pre-market and it broke down immediately. And I said, let's watch this for the rest of the day. And then by midday, it broke out and formed a wedge. And we put a buy right there at about 10.45. And within an hour, the stock traded to over 14, 14.40 for four points. And that was about, mm, let's call it an hour and a half, 90 minutes of so nice trade there. And that's the kind of stuff I look for every day. But normally, most of the stocks I'm looking at start from the get-go at the beginning of the session. For example, a stock like um, ABM, which had good earnings, exploded um, last night. And then this morning, it's consolidating and flagged. When the market opened today, it gapped up and started to run. The first pullback held at 50, and I told my people when it started to move at around 35 and three quarters, could be a day trade. But if you look at it right now as we speak and it's live, it's broken out to new highs at 38 and a half roughly and flagging. And my channel tells me the at target's up around 40 and a half, three quarters by the end of the day. So this could be another two points before the closer or thereabout. And obviously my support is going to be through that level and a stop at 36.82. This is, yes, one minute. If you look at here, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and, and right now we're, we're live. Um, so what I, I'm able to do is after years and years of analysis, especially after the 2000 crash, I decided to do more day trading to eliminate the overnight risk. And so when I'm when you're in my room with the various members, uh, which are very very bright people, uh, some phenomenal traders, some of which have been with me 10 or 15 years, um, I've been doing it since 2001, in terms of this site. And so when you come into the room, you'll find a lot of very accomplished traders with really brilliant ideas, and a lot, a lot of them like to mentor. So if you're a newbie or someone that's new and trying to learn, I welcome you to come into my site for two weeks for free, no credit card, just sign up. And enjoy it, make some money. Most people find that they make enough money in the free two weeks to cover the first year's subscription. Very reasonable monthly subscription. So um, back to what I was looking at and talking about earlier. 
what we're looking forward to doing the morning is I come in, believe it or not, I'm here at four o'clock Pacific time. That's where I live and on the West Coast in the desert in Los Angeles, Palm Desert, Palm Springs area. Um, so for that, I have to be up early. Uh, I get up a quarter to four. I'm on the site by four, between four and 5.15. They're about my time, eight and 8.15, your time. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much looking at stocks, looking at news, looking at patterns and talking about and coming up with a focus list, a stock, a list of eight to 12 stocks, or maybe sometimes more depending on the market, that of stocks that look like they want to explode, that are trading up in the market, consolidating, flagging, coiling, and setting up perhaps a pattern that could be a pop and run for the rest of the day. And that's what we look for. For me, the day trader's dream is a stock that gaps up and moves, um, moves in a lateral uh, type coil or consolidate flag or pullback or something like that. But in this case, for example, it ran up, consolidated, it broke out, and it's been trending all day. It happens with a lot of stocks. Some work differently, some, some than others. UONE is a stock that yesterday went ballistic and then came down. This morning, at 9.30, it started to run again, pulled back on a flag, another little flag there, a wedge there, had a five-wave move up. It came down in a three-wave corrective and retested. It's since broken out, formed a wedge, and as I speak, is breaking out yet again. Now 31. This stock is up 18 points or 145% today. Fantastic trade for the second day. Um, and my target would be approximately when you look at the angle of ascent, somewhere around 36, give or take point. Should be interesting. But that's why when, when you're always looking at stocks in pre-market, you may not find a stock because this didn't move till just after the open. There was nothing in pre-market to indicate that this is going to take off. But traders jumped into it right away. And the first indication for me is when I saw this, usually when a stock pops, and they get some sort of coil or wedge, and the volume gets very quiet. I called that the low volume ebb. It's a, it's a phrase I coined many years ago, a combination of low volume and quiet price. And that broke out and it ran. Look at it now, 31.50 and still going. 32.16 high right here. So you never know when you're going to get something's going to come up that you can trade. Perfect example was Ovid. Uh, this morning didn't do much. It was up a little bit pre-market. It was ga it gapped and it's cons consolidated. When the market opened from the get-go at five and three quarters, it started to run. I didn't really get that interested in it until I saw this coil. But that's a what we call a continuation pattern. And normally, when a stock runs and does this, it's a pause that refreshes. When you look at the volume on it, usually the volume gets very quiet. Look at these two little bars right there just before it popped. And the vibe and the, uh, the price bar itself is very quiet and narrow and small. The smaller near the ape, the smaller the bar near the apex, the more likely it is to pop and run. Well, when it broke out here, we uh, had a target uh, and set a target at seven and seven and a half. Well, this explosive move got it to 729. It backed off in a wedge and then exploded to 759, right at my target range, and then came down for resuming its advance, and right now you can see what it's up to. But net net on a day, right now it's up 33% on a mere 11 million shares. And that's the stuff you want to see uh, when you're in my site. So what I'm looking for pre-market is the, I'm looking for the, the, the stock that makes that pop and then runs. Hold on a moment, there it is. Right, and so once we prepare for the day, we set up a focus list. Ten minutes after the market openings opens, I come on and show you the early patterns and how they're developing. And the ones that are on the focus list that look like they're going to be runners, I'll put buy alerts on them and we'll go with it. Um, and, the, and the other stocks will be on my watch list. So I'll just keep a, pair, a watch on them until later in the day. Um, lots of lots of things that come up, but what I'm looking for is pennants, coils, and flags. Early on, I want to see something like this. Let me see if I can bring this up for you. Any second now. There we go. So here's a stock that had a big breakaway gap. It was down around 32 and a half. It opened around 33 and a half. It ran quickly to 34 and three quarters. Formed a little wedgie. When it broke out there on Viam with a gap, some of us bought it. And I said, you may want to wait for it to take out the high, which it didn't for two hours later, but it had an ascending, tightening, a narrowing bull coil. See the little bars there and the really light volume? That usually occurs pre-breakout. The breakout and a pullback gave you an ample opportunity to buy this at 35. It popped to 36 and a half, flagged, and ran all the way up to over 38 for a beautiful day trade. 
And that's, you know, but we discovered that one when it broke out and formed that little wedge here. This is an example of some of the day trades we've had in the past that I've preserved. These are in my book, per se. Um, Wuba uh, is what I just showed you. Another one is Zone, Z-H-N-E, I believe it was acquired subsequently. These charts are five years old, but they come from my book, and I wanted to show it to you. Interesting chart. Big breakaway gap, strong move up, then a nice consolidation on low volume ebb right near the apex. I can't tell you how many times I see that early on. Then a pop and a three-wave corrective flag, and then another pop and a coil, and a slow move up and another coil, and at the end of the day, from where we got in at 470, it was up to 570, or a full point, or almost 22, 23% in less than a day. But notice how all day this channeled up in a rising channel, never broke support, and uh, adhered to the top as well. So, in, in giving you an example of the things that I look for every day, that's one of them. Another example, FMI, just to show you a few examples of what I speak about. There's an unusual one, but I wanted to show it to you because it really worked out. It popped and pulled back, so we didn't do anything with it because the pullback was pretty steep. But it went sideways and formed a nice coil. It got very quiet near the apex on very low volume, then it popped and we went in long about 21 and a quarter. It then coiled, flagged, coiled again, and then exploded to get to 25. From 21 and a quarter, 375, 15%. And then it went into a long coil. And that's another example of a day trade that worked for us. And obviously, I could show you lots of examples that didn't. But in 70% of the cases, that's right, over 70% of the cases, these things work for us. Now, we often see stocks move in five waves. Um, and I just basically wave stuff. Wave, wave one up, two down, three up, four down, and wave five. And what occurs a lot is Wave five curves at lunch hour. Let me show you this one. So here's a pop at the opening and a nice little wedgie, a pop, but it didn't get through the high and pulled back very quiet, low volume ebb, breakaway gap, I mean, breakaway surge, another very quiet apex near, and then another five, it's a one, two, three, four, five waves up. And it did it around lunch hour. It's amazing to me how many traders uh, that are trading their corporate uh, uh, portfolios or hedge fund managers or anybody who's trading a, a, uh, an account for one of the brokerage firms, uh, they will basically take their profits around noon and go to lunch. They're not going to leave it on the table. When you see a trade like this one, where most of us didn't get in until about 9.35, but within an hour and a half, it was trading at 11 and a half. You want to take that profit and take it off the table. And you can see what happened the rest of the day, not much. And lastly, FMI, which I think I might have shown you. Let me look at this again. Yep, I just showed you that. So what we try to do in the morning is develop a disciplined, organized, focused approach, meaning there's 12,000 stocks in the universe, and I try to get you about 12, meaning one-tenth of one percent, what I think, of the top stocks for that day. We monitor the early price volume action closely. If they're doing what I want to do, it's likely we'll trade it. There's something called volume buzz indicator from Warden Brothers. I, I use TC2000. I think it's the best charting software I've ever seen. I've been using it for 25 years. So um, you can make it white background with black and white bars. I chose the uh, colored bars because red means a down day and green means an up day. And you can see, and for example, when a stock is running with rising unbounds volume and rising volume, it's usually an indic indicator of a confirmation of the trend. Here's a stock that I put out this morning, and this happens to be a stock that I am very high on for the future. This is a little recommendation for you guys. Wrap Technologies makes a the bowler wrap, which is what police would use to, and, and uh, you know, they kind of spits out a rope and wraps around an individual to prevent them from any perpetrator from uh, attacking or, or, or causing problems. It basically incapacitates them uh, and without any harm. And we, you know what's going on now with the shootings and with uh, um, people dying and all of that stuff. It's unnecessary. You can just use this new new program. And you can see that when the riots, uh, the problem started, this thing popped, and they've gotten some contracts. The stock took another pop, and today there's another contract. And I'm telling you, folks, that this stock is going to be a home run. Looking at a weekly chart, 
I think once he gets above all of that, you're looking at 15, 20, maybe more. And even the possibility of a takeover just so happens that the founder of WRTC is a, one of the co-founders of Taser, and very close to Taser. And I'm hearing uh, rumors that Taser may be interested in acquiring his company at some point too. So there's a lots of positive, but I'm a technical analyst and I really don't care about fundamentals as much as I do with the charts telling me. The charts telling me explosive move, a 0.618 Fib retracement, a nice pop and a little mini two-day flag. If you look at an hourly chart, you'll see it right there. There's a breakout. And today, if this thing gets across 10, 12, and 14 of my targets going forward. Another low-price stock I like a lot is Milestone Scientific. Look at this chart. First, it had a big run-up. Got hammered in the March the pullback like everything else did, but it created a V-bottom with a rising platform, a breakout. And right now, it's just right at the March multi-year high, and I went through this, this is a $4 stock, and maybe eight to 10 in the next year, MLSS. In the biotech sector, I love a company called New Base Therapeutics. Um, you can see the chart shows that this stock has gone um, from a buck and a half, two bucks to um, the $12 range, almost 12. It's near key short-term resistance, so I was looking for a pullback. If you see nine and three quarters, 10, I'm looking for 15 to 20. Those are just some examples of stocks that I like for swings and longer term. Back to the day trades, we're always looking for ideas on an intraday basis. And what I come up with in the morning is going to be a list of stuff. Now, the reason I mentioned Warden Brothers is because they have a unique indicator that no one has. It's called volume buzz. You can click on the top of that column. ALPN, which had a big gap up, came down. And then it gave us a big day trading opportunity there. It might still be good to go higher. It's now up 161% of 33 million on big biotech news. But look at the volume. 190%, oh, excuse me, 190,000% more volume than average. That's huge. In other words, it doesn't trade a lot. And it's fairly thin. And it ripped today for 33 million shares. AEMD is another 13,000% more volume than average on that breakout right there, breakaway gap. So when I walk, coming in the morning and I look at stocks that are popping, I want to see if they have big volume uh, from the get-go. If they have big volume, it tell, tells me there's uh, lots of interest. The UONE we just talked about reached 34 and a half. And if I'm not mistaken, my target now is 37. Many of the people in my room have been in this stock since it broke out there. And the confirmation of it, it's basically a one, two, three now. It may not be done. And by the end of the day, it could be four and five and maybe 40 again. Unbelievable. The stock traded up to 40, back down to 10, and back up to 34 in a day and a half. If you like volatility, you got it. But the tech trader and myself, I look for stocks that have the volatility enough for us to trade and trade it successfully. NEON was a perfect example of the kind of patterns that I just absolutely love. You pop in your coil. When you get very quiet, look for another pop. They got it. This is a one, two, three, four. The fourth wave indicates that if it breaks this, it takes out 640, which I told my people, the stock could go vertical. Now, not only that, it went from 640 in minutes to 868. Nice day trade. We caught that one. Came down the little coil and it's broken out again and what is it doing now this may be a rock star today before the day's over it already is but if you look at this pattern once you come down hard and take pro and profit takers are taken out it breaks out of a little um base pattern and then forms a wedge this is likely two to, two to one odds that it pops and goes higher i would now look for a retest of this level around 830 maybe as high as 865 if, if it gets to that level this is gonna be nine and a half three quarters but for now um, this is up 245 or 48% on a million six. And for that stock, it's huge volume. You can, if you look at the overall chart, and I always refer to the daily chart first, look what the old pat, what the overall pattern looks like. It exploded in March, April. It formed a wedge and popped out one day, but couldn't get through the high and backed off. Volume got quiet. Today it exploded and broke out. You can see from this line back up here, and I have multiple bottoms and tops in this range. So nine and three quarters is my target. If it pops here, my targets are eight and a half, nine and three quarters. That should be interesting. 
So an example of the kind of stocks we look for every day. Now this morning, AESE exploded, formed a little flag, and when it broke out, we bought it right there at about 240. Then exploded from the wedge and it broke out again and ran all the way up eventually to 396, almost four from 240. Now that's a dollar sixty on a 240 or about 80 percent, and it didn't take an hour. So luckily we got that one nicely. And I also told everybody that when you see a stock form one bottom there, two bottoms there, 345, once it breaks 345, you're stopped. That's what happens subsequently. Now, another thinly traded stock that is going nowhere right now, but exploded recently, is pulling back on low volume. I love that pullback. The buyer on seed for a move to 10 and eventually 20. They are involved with genetically modified seeds. I understand that China may be approving that. If that's the case, the stock rockets. Just on the rumor, it went from four to eight and a half. So um, every day I come into to the room and I'm looking for stocks that are popping, stocks that are running, stocks that are breaking out above resistance and potentially not only a day trade, but often you'll see me put a day trade and a swing trade out concurrently because I think it'll move that day. I also think it may have uh, the possibilities of extending if over a period of three to five days, if not three to five weeks. So I create that focus list and I publish it. And by the way, just an explanation of what buy and buzz is. Basically, you know, giving computers and the ability for them to do anything at high speeds, at any point in the trading day, this indicator looks back over the previous 100 days and normalizes the volume at that point in the day versus today's volume. It'll make a comparison with that volume and it'll show a value of if it's tripled of up 200%, three times normal. That, so it's just a tremendous indicator and there's nobody out there I know that has this indicator. It is so useful in trading, you wouldn't believe it. So um, because we're limited in time today, I wanted to let you know a bit about what I look for every day, intraday. The intraday rising parallel channel with, with high relative volume is what I want to see. I've given you lots of examples of stocks that are doing that. Um, yeah, stocks that are giving you a run up in a rising channel like that. Um, that was a little steeper. One of the reasons why, when I see too far too fast and it's too steep, it's not 45 degree angles, it's above that. Normally it'll have to pull back and reinforce that. You look at WRTC, this is much more of a, uh, what I would consider a rising parallel channel, a close to a 45 degree. This may be even less than 45, but I'm looking for the stock at some point today to make a run at the 990, 10 range. I think 10 being the previous high might be some resistance up in that zone, but certainly a fabulous day for it up $1.13 at 13% and 2.4 million shares. That is huge buying for that stock relatively. Much more to go in my opinion. But as an example of the kind of stocks that run up on an intraday basis, end phase was one, kind of short covering, I believe. But when you're coming in and you see a stock rising at a certain angle, pretty much was that right there. And it pulls back down, but doesn't break it. It pumps up. You continue to stay in a stock with rising angles. This may not be the best example. There was a lot of stocks today that popped and are moving. I have a day trade currently right now in the room with some of my traders on CPAH. Um, when it popped and formed that flag, I gave it to them at about 4.30. It then ripped to 4.68, pulled back down, and I said, not to worry, it looks like a vol low volume pullback falling wedge with good technicals, and here we are coming on again. It's a thin stock. It's only has 200,000 traded today, but it might take off and rip later in the day through 4.75 and get up to over 5, and that's what I'm looking for. That's the kind of stuff you get from me every day in a room in terms of the intraday patterns. Um, ABM was a beauty. Again, I showed it to you earlier, and it's still running, although it is currently in a minor pullback. Yesterday, DADA was a good example as it popped and coiled and then ran up beautifully. Today, it's consolidating over the last day or two. We'll keep an eye on that one for further upside. A good a pattern I always look for is a coil because it, it shows a narrowing of buying and selling pressures. When it gets to the apex, it's like a Mexican standoff where you basically, you know, don't shoot till you see the right side. Who's going to jump first, the sellers or the buyers? So the bottom line is when it takes out the first high over 33 with volume, that's where I'm interested. 
the target stand would be a retest of the high at 33.50 and then a run to 34.50. And look at the extension as well. When you look at a measured move, this one went from 31 to 33 and a half, two and a half points. Add that onto the pullback low, you get 34 and a half. Guess what? That's my target. Just coincidentally, it's also the measured move. So that's a legitimate target at 34 and a half for EDIT. So once one of my swing trades, I'll show you a few of my swing trades, U.S. Concrete, when it came down off the low and spiked and platformed here, I put a trade on it at around 13 and a half. It popped to 20 and backed off. That was my swing trade. And it's another swing trade here as it pops out above 19 and a half and runs 29 and change and then pull back and back up here. I think this is looking for 35 and maybe as much as 50, especially if they pass any kind of infrastructure bill. This is one of the largest concrete companies in the country. Another one is NEO. NEO broke out across here, put a swing on it around four. It's made it up to 744 and it still looks higher. I don't see any reason why this can't extend um, perhaps as high as even nine or 10 up in that zone. In the oil sector, Apache Petroleum with double bottom and broke out and then pulled back, put a, a, date, a swing on it here around seven and three quarters. My first target was 14, it made it up to 14.05. The reason for that target was the big gap in there. They consolidated for a month and broke out again. It's pulled back to retest. Not so sure about the oil sector, but I don't think it's done yet. And if this turns out to be a bull wedge right there, and it's near the apex of that wedge, you might very well see um, 18, 20, and even as high as mid-high 20s, particularly if oil starts to run again. CYDY is a um, intriguing pattern. Explosive from pennies, literally a quarter, to a dollar 36 and then a wedge. Now, I, didn't go, I don't usually look at or trade stocks below two bucks in my room. Rule number one, we don't discuss stock, stocks under two. But as you can see, this stock exploded from... 75 cents to three dollars and change and then coiled for about six weeks before breaking out this little mini coil and today's pop tell me this may be ready for an attack or run at 380 once it gets to 380 the mid channel target is five and a half so i wouldn't be shocked to see this pop run to five and a half and eventually if it really has mojo getting up to the high single digits I also do shorts. I just want you to know it's not all about longs, folks. Here's a list of some of my shorts that I am watching right now. They look terrible. And now ERI I put out yesterday. I just think that any stock that goes from 70 to 6 and back to 47 is without much of a pullback has probably got some, even though it's not deteriorated enough technically for me to say this is a short. I want everyone to keep an eye on this one for at least a pullback. I think 34.5 is now 41. Royal Caribbean has the same pattern, and I'm, I'm really uh, skeptical about the cruise line stock. I, I don't get it. I don't get why. The, 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 I think they're in big trouble for the next year or two. I just don't. Uh, who's going to get on a, on a ship with all the problems they've had with uh, even before coronavirus? People are dying on board from all kinds of diseases and stuff, not to mention falling overboard or getting food poisoning. So anyway, that's my rationale. On Royal Caribbean, uh, the key support on this one is 54. Underneath 54, I'm looking for 49, 47, 49 zone, or maybe lower. That's a current tech trader swing short. Another one is Arvin. Arvin got hammered, rallied back. I put a short at 34 and change. My targets were 29 and 22 and a half. We already reached 29. And today's reversal down a dollar tells me this could go lower. I also want to share with you, I trade the UVXY folks. You saw the move when the market collapsed in March. Kid you not, this went from 10 to 135, 13-fold increase. And it did it in one month. I'm not saying we're going to do that again, but if this market caves and it did pop to resistance and pull back, I think the pullback here is an opportunity, opportunistic time for this stock to make a move to high 40s and maybe even high 50s or more if this market rolls over. And yes, I'm anticipating a pullback in the market, I think the market is a little bit cooked. As you can see, the overall pattern is, is long in the tooth. 
right now it's starting to look pretty toppy to me. I don't know if it can break back out again and get over 10,200 in the NASDAQ 100, but you can see right now with about an hour to go, the market's trending towards the afternoon lows. And if we crack here, we could come down pretty hard. So one of the things I'm looking at is the UVXY. Now on an intraday basis, you can see the declining channel. So it's going to have to pop. For starters, across 37 and three quarters. So if this gets above 37 and three quarters, I would have put probably a day trade on it for a move to, you know, up in that zone. <coughs> and right now, it looks like it's coming on, it may be coming on strong. We'll see. It's at support right there over the last three days. Back to some more short stuff uh, in terms of what I have on the short side. Even though I love Bristol Myers, it's a massive head and shoulder top breakdown and snap back, and it doesn't look good. Technicals are deteriorating, so I'm not sure why or what's going on there. Flare's another one that popped and then broke support right there. It's coming down to secondary support right now, and it could roll all the way there to the low 30s, currently 40. Hemonetics is another similar pattern to Bristol Myers, a head and shoulder top and a breakdown, looking like it wants to go lower. <clears throat> NBCR intriguing me on the negative side. Breakdown rising wedge to the moving average and failure, and then a bear flag. If it breaks this flag, we can see 52 or even 40. Tactile TCMD is another, but if it doesn't break out here and rolls over, I got targets to 35 and 29. Plenty of other stocks to look at. INGM was a short from up here when it formed the bear wedge. It continues to look ugly. And that recent bear wedge broke down as well. So I can't tell you how far this goes, but here's an example if you, on a long-term short. Stock that went from 287 to 34, and it looks like it's going to be 23 or even 18s. Stock I said short uh, a couple of weeks ago, NTX, NXTC broke. We tested and breaking down again. You can see that the falling technicals are telling me this is going lower as well. A few more stocks I'm watching carefully. I'm not sure which ones might be shorts, but we shall see. Back to the list of longs, and then I'll take a few questions. A stock I liked a lot, I put a swing on when it broke out here was an LTX. It then rolled over in March, but look at the platform, the pop, and the pattern is very conducive to higher levels. Well, here's why. We have, uh, anytime you run up and have a nice consolidation, an orderly pullback, uh, somewhat low volume, it holds support and pops, and it has a fully wedge that holds the 50, another flag that holds the 50, and a couple of tests that hold the 50. This red line is 50 period moving average. It just tells me it's a matter of time before it goes higher. Today it's popped down 61 or 12 percent. Fine is picked up a little bit. It could be the kind of stock that just rockets into the high teens and low 20s and LTX. One of our, one of our most successful swings, and I don't usually swing an ETF, but I was so positive that oil was ridiculously oversold when it got down to near zero. And I put a swing on Gush when it was in the mid teens, and it went from 14 or so. 67 for 300 percent in 60 days it happens that's a way you get lucky but in this case uh, with, i'm not so sure about oil down here a lot of things fundamentally that could hold things back but when you look at the overall structure of this rising channel it's a beauty and it may go higher and if it does don't be surprised to see 70s and 80s on this one particularly if oil goes into the, you know, the low to mid 40s um Cloudera is another swing that I put on after it broke out there. You can see why. If you look at the chart carefully, V bottoms with platforms, one of my favorite patterns. Because usually this signals a reversal, and this signals the consolidation. Once you break out above that consolidation, in this case, it happened right here at about eight and three quarters. Then in three weeks, it was 12. It then came down, retested, and popped. And now hit 14 today, almost 1393. Top of the channel and my target right there. 
in another example of what I look for when I'm looking for swing trades. Stocks that um, are consolidating enough and breaking out through a key resistance level that tells me it may go substantially higher. Novavax is just a typical chart, folks. Any stock that acts like this, first of all, oh, the downtrend, the breakaway gap, a little um, consolidation of about a month with a narrowing coil near the apex right there. Look how low the volume was, and then it bears your pop. Now, obviously, in March, it pulled back, but this was ready to rip, and it did. From a low of 677, this stock is now 58, and that took 90 days. Note the breakout here across key resistance at the gap. About, <clears throat> about halfway into it, a falling wedge, and then a pop with a breakaway gap. Another coil, and yet another breakout. So watch the current action at 61 and a half. If we get through that, we're looking at 80 and 100 as potential targets for NVAX. Terrific chart. With about nine or 10 minutes to go, I'd like to take some questions, um, if we have any from the group, and go and give you some of my analysis on individual stuff. And let me just say this real quickly, folks. Uh, the Tech Trader is a very cool site. I want to just give you an example of some of the things that are going on right now on the site. You'll see people talking about um, various different stocks. UVXY is perking up. CARB on the verge of a big breakout. And, and constant ideas, constant, I guess WRTC is going. And that's the one I told you about. I think it's going to be a home run. And it went right to resistance and backed up, which is what I was expecting. But still, keep an eye on that, on pullbacks. Um, but in my site, the constant, um, you're getting constant ideas, constant input. And this is what it looks like. You, you have the ability to post anything you want. People have the ability to respond to your post. If you want to be active, you want to be in a place that has a, an incredible amount of talented traders, I, I, I implore you to go to the techtrader.com, put your name, address in here, and email everything, sign up for free, no credit card, try it for 15 days, and there's a picture of yours truly. That's my most recent picture. I've been doing this a long time, folks. I'm 73. I've been trading for 60 years. I think I got it right after about 20, so I'm good, I'm good for the last 40. <laughs> this is uh, for now, though. I'd like to take some questions, and let's see uh, if I can help some of you out with some of your current trades. Yeah, no problem, Harry. Thank you so much. Uh, a question came in from a viewer. They're wondering, how many buy stock alerts do you provide per day on average, and do the alerts come in during the RTH session or near the opening bell only? Um, when I'm going through the pre-market, uh, you know, 45 minutes to an hour of the, the focus, focus list, I will put which ones I want on the watch list and which ones I want to put buy alerts on. Now, buy alert doesn't mean buy it now in the pre-market. It just means this is a stock I think is a buy for a day trade today. Now, I provide targets, stops, support, resistance, and I tell you what stocks to buy. When you buy it and where you buy it is up to you. I'm not going to hold your hand and enter the trade for you. But put on your big boy pants and put a trade in. But you have to make a decision based on the price of the stock, the volume you're seeing, the, the story, what you're comfortable with. You have to ask yourself, can I day trade following Harry or do I need to be a swing trader because I don't have the time and energy? Or because I'm working, I can't follow it minute by minute, like you need to when you're day trading. Um, so come into my site for two weeks for free with no credit card and enjoy it and see what you think. And I think you'll be very pleased with the environment and the record of picks. Now, there's about, I would say, pre-market, I'm showing you eight to 10 ideas by alerts. By the end of the day, you may see 15, 18, or 20, because it depends on if something's running and popping, and I think it's a trade, I'll put it out there. I don't believe in narrowing it to one or two stocks when there might be three or four others that are running wild. I want to make sure we catch the best trades of the day. And in many cases, when a stock starts off like this did, you don't know whether it starts there, whether it's going to do that, right? So we just stick with it and trade with it uh, with targets and stops and keep raising the targets and stops for you. Now, many of us got out on a spike up into the mid-20s. Some of us got back in here, and some of us got back in there. We have 
51 minutes to go. It wouldn't shock me if this made it back to test the high 30s, but I would also put a stop underneath these lows. If you're asking me where to stop a stock, I always say, watch the, current, the recent pullback lows for support. If it gets on the 26th, likely to be out of the stock, because even though it's four points from here, it could be down to 17 by the end of the day. That's the answer to question number one about how many stocks I pick. All right. Uh, we had another person writing in. They're wondering if you could take a look at um, Atlassian, ticker T-E-A-M. Well, great chart long term. Recently, and a nice chart since the March low. And what I'm seeing here is a perfect parallel rising channel which tells me it ain't done yet, unless this turns out to be a head and shoulders type top, which I doubt. I don't think the pattern's there. So what it looks like to me is a bull wedge, a large one. And when that wedge breaks to the upside, it looks like it might've done it today. But I need confirmation through 180, 180 and a half. You get that, you'll probably test the high. If it gets to 192, that double top there, I would look for mid-channel around 207 to 210. And then longer term, 235.40. That's my target. I would look for 60, 70 points up. If it gets to um, 190, then I got a confirmation. Conversely, if we do get a bear phase, and I'm, I'm kind of expecting one, if this comes down and takes that 161, you must stop it under that. Anything else? All right. Uh, another person was asking about Centennial Research Source Development. It's ticker CDEV. Yeah, um, well, we traded this actually when it popped here. Um, there's a gap in there that it filled. And now there's a trend that looks like that. Connecting those highs right there, see it? It tells me that the angle of ascent is something like that. And it's pulled back to support. What I don't want to see is them take this out under 115. And I, I, by the way, this was not a trade of mine because it's under under a buck. And I don't even look at stocks under a dollar. And I hate to even talk about it because it encourages people to buy a stock that could get whacked. <laughs> Question number one is you have to ask yourself after a 12-year roaring bull market, why is this stock at dollar twenty-five? Well, we know it was trading up there in, in the um 20 22 range and it's gotten whacked down a quarter. I would say right now, coming off the low, my take on this is that this is a bottoming pattern, breakaway gap, spike into a resistance zone created by that right there at that gap. Almost filled it there. And then broke out with a monster move. The current wedge tells me this is a bull wedge because it comes on lower volume with flat technicals, and that's what you want to see. The only proviso is you must stop it on the 115 because then you know, it can be back to 75 cents. But if this does a one, two, three, four, Elliott wave move, it might be, and my next target is, survey says, three and a quarter. So this stock could double or triple from here. If it gets, in particular, I'm gonna be watching for this one to take out over 150, 51 across that high from two days ago with big volume. You do that, then you're likely to retest the high about 215 and then maybe make it to three, three and a quarter. That's my tip. All right. Uh, another viewer is asking, uh, when shorting, uh, do you do you take any protection? And if so, what is it? Well, of course, you always have to. I don't trade without stops, ever. All you need is one stock to whack you and you're out. You need to preserve your capital at all times. Everything I give you every day, every trade I give you, whether it's long or short, has a stop and a target. So, um, the, it would all the, the stop depends on where support is, whether it be a trend line, a lateral price support, moving average, or all three. So, but you have to put a stop in, and that's how I protect my trades. All right. Uh, we had a, a person asking about Roku. They say it looks like it may have it may have broken its downtrend. Well, no question. Um, here's the downtrend. In my opinion. The down channel was there. It actually had, let me show you this on an hourly chart because you'll see it better. Inverse head and shoulders, see it? Breakout, retest resistance there, pull back to support at the neckline of the head and shoulders. Beautiful pattern. When I see this pattern, 
with a pullback, it's always go, go. Target 134, and then test this spike high at 138 and three quarters. That's my near term target. Ultimately, a retest of 153. So let's look for one, say 137 and 152 are targets for me on Roku. And it does look like it's going higher. I'd like to see a little bit better volume. But one thing I'm always concerned about is when a stock has big volume and a breakout and secondary leg has lower volume, it might be lost some momentum. I don't think so in this case. But And Roku's got a lot of um, energy and power when it goes and a lot of institutional interest. So stick with the long on this one. All right. And another person's asking, would you sh go short or long on American Express? With an AXP? AXP, yes. When I go long or short? My question is, are you currently in a position or are you looking to be in a position? Because um, if you're in it, I say hold it. And the reason I say hold it is because it's got a large wedge. What I would do is look at this here, right where it is, and said that if it goes any lower, you might get a quick short to retest the lows at 97 and a half range. There's some support across there, see it? But should it take out 96.7, it's in big trouble, down to 93 and maybe even mid 80s. It's not a short, and this is the one thing I always counsel all my traders. You have plenty of time to short. When this market goes down, you're gonna know it, and you can always short the next bounce. Now, that didn't occur in March. That was one of the biggest drops I've ever seen without a really important bounce. And that's what caught a lot of people. And that's why the, the uh, selling was exacerbated because nobody could get out, and nobody could short either. So in American, uh, for example, what I would look for is a bounce into resistance to short it, not here necessarily, because it could you could short it immediately pop uh, or it can come down and test support. I'm not sure yet on this one, because look, in essence, it's a base breakout and a wedge. So it's bullish not bearish, but that could turn quickly if this market rolls over. Right now, with a lot of stocks making higher highs, American Express is trailing momentum-wise and may be diverging negatively, but it hasn't broken yet. All right, Harry, and just one last thing. Um, before we go, we had a, an attendee wondering if you could show your contact page one last time. Sure. One moment. It's right there. So basically, um, you go to the main trade, just go to thetechtrader.com. Put your first name, last name, your um, email address and uh, password, and just sign up for free. Click on sign up for free. And this page will say, it looks like you're currently a member. But you can go through there and check out my profile about, my, about me and about all the things I do, some videos I've done, things of that nature. But you want to go to the main room, the main site, and fill that out and just click sign up for free. No credit card. So feel free to come in for two weeks and get some free advice, make some money, hopefully enough to cover you for the first year or two. I've had people tell me they made enough money in the first two trades to pay for the first two years of trade. Of trade. My, um, I charge a nominal amount of money, but uh, and at least for me, I think it's nominal. Um, but there's, like I said, it's a site that you guys will be thrilled with. In terms of the accuracy, the friendliness of the people, and the willingness for people to mentor each other, ask questions uh, of each other, and uh, you'll find it's a very comfortable place to be. So, welcome aboard. I hope we'll see you in the room. Thanks for coming by today. This is a, this is Harry Boxer signing off, um, and hopefully you guys will um, be very pleased with what you see when you come into the room. Bye for now. All right, Harry, thank you again for another brilliant presentation. We really appreciate you. Hope to see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.